As you can see, T2 is sitting on the uh, scooter workbench again, which seems to be where it spends the majority of its life being worked on. I would prefer that I just ride the thing around, but ever since I've gone with the uh, 100cc liquid cooled setup, I'm just constantly either blowing a head gasket or some sort of seal between a cylinder and head. And I'm not exactly sure how the timing will go, but at some point I will do a video about the sealing issues that I've had with this thing. Um, don't know if that'll be before this video or after. Not sure how to get edited. But anyway, last time I rode this, uh, don't you probably can't see it, but it has filled up the uh, expansion tank and it started spitting cooling at me when I was going down the road so clearly it's blown another seal it's not sealing once again there and it's now late August with car shows and bike shows at the beaches coming up in less than a month actually about I think two to three weeks for the first bike show and then the car shows are within about a month from now so it's got me thinking if I can't get this thing straight to where I'm fairly confident I can make it to a car show I should have a backup motor so this video is basically going to be about making a backup engine for this scooter. Uh, just while I'm at it, I don't know that I've really said much about this on YouTube, so you may notice I've now got a different gas tank in the back here. That is a two and a half gallon spun aluminum gas tank. I took my original tank out because it had a leak and I just didn't feel like trying to fix it. I had actually tried to JB weld it and that didn't seal it. And welding a used gas tank is kind of iffy, so I just decided to go this route. So again, that's a two and a half gallon. It's a eight by twelve spun aluminum gas tank. And when I was mounting that, I kind of stretched the frame a few inches out back just to make it fit, and made this little storage compartment here out of metal because that's where my old gas tank used to sit. So now I can carry my oil around in here, and it gives me a little bit more room under my seat. And here's just a little closer look. So that box is made out of 22 gauge steel. I just uh, made the pattern out and then bent it up so it would fit in the frame there and then there's the gas tank you can see it's just got where it bolts down to the frame where these uh, straps bolt to the frame and then you just basically clamp the tank in and it's got a vented gas cap pretty straightforward but there's a look at that just to kind of give you an update if you've watched my videos for long you probably know that I usually run 96 to 103 cc uh, big bore stroker engines in my uh, Chinese clone scooter and that's what I've just loved for years I got a 90 cc as one of my actually the second scooter I guess uh, happened to have a factory 90 cc and then I started learning more about them and just really liked them because I thought they were great street engines. They made a lot of power for still being mild and reliable and streetable. Um, and now I switched to liquid cooled and I like that even more because it runs hard all day long and it's very consistent. Uh, so I didn't really want to switch away from that but of course as soon as I figure out get into the liquid cooling stuff now I can't find replacement liquid cooled cylinders very well. I can get the uh, 52 millimeter stock stuff, but it's still a lot of money just to get the 52 millimeter stock stuff. I think it's like $300 or so to get a cylinder that way. And I started thinking about I don't want to go backwards to like a sport kind of 70cc setup. And I'm not even sure that a mid race 70cc, depending what it is, it may or may not keep up with what uh, T2 has done for all these years with the 100 cc's so I just didn't want to go backwards and I can't really proceed with the 103 cc stuff so I was trying to figure out what I wanted to try next and this is kind of what I ended up at so this is the TPR 86 cc uh, tuning kit I guess they call it and that is the cylinder kit that's a 50 millimeter bore cylinder kit and a 44 millimeter stroke crank which should come out to 86 cc roughly also just ordered a replacement uh, gasket set just to have it on hand and when I looked at this initially it was five hundred dollars for the tuning kit the cylinder and the crank kit or the cylinder kit and the crankshaft excuse me and I looked overseas in Europe and saw that scooter attack had it for 
410 shipped where it was 500 with free shipping essentially 500 with free shipping at scootertuning.ca I actually contacted them and they were willing to price match it they said they normally wouldn't price match Europe but they did price match this for me so not at all a sponsorship or anything like that I just literally wanted to say thank you to them for price matching that because they had it in stock and got it to me in two days where if I had had to wait on scooter attack uh, it was out of stock and it would take 10 to 12 days to ship from Europe so that worked out pretty well for me but anyway let's take a look at what this kit is before I go opening any boxes I wanted to just show you uh, how this crank came to me now everything on the outside is in perfect condition so I don't have any concerns there but what I noticed is that if you can hear that the crank is just bouncing around in there which I've never had a crank come to me before in any sort of professional packaging where it just bounced around like that and the reason I'm bringing this up is because there were reports online that potentially these cranks could come uh, out of true so it just made me wonder if that were the case and as far as I know there's only one guy that I, I can kind of verify that has said that his crank was out of true but if it were a problem it made me wonder if it had anything to do with the fact that this crankshaft is just bouncing around and again it all came sh packed uh, great and the two boxes here weren't moving around in the box that they were in but regardless there's it sounds like there's a lot of free space in there and the crank is just kind of rattling around all right so let's go ahead and see what's in here how exactly it is packaged see that's just the sleeve this is sealed on both sides, so nothing's probably been tampered with there. So there's how it's packaged. And, and you can see it would have a lot of room. Can't move too much that way, but it's certainly got enough clearance in here from the way this is designed that it could bounce up and down. Maybe a lot of it was these bearings, I hope. In fact, let's find out. I'll go ahead and take these bearings. It comes with seals. And of course, the mandatory top performance sticker. Let's go ahead and just close that up. And it still moves around a bit, but that's not as disturbing as when you hear it with, I assume, the bearings in there. It's probably what was making the noise. Yeah, the bearing sounds pretty bad once you take those out. Not terrible. So anyway, there's the crank. A little closer look here, and then take it out. Pretty standard uh, performance crank, I guess. Everything looks fairly clean. Got some discoloration here on the pin. Comes with its own uh, wrist pin bearing. This is surprisingly narrow. I'm used to the the 96 103 cc stuff, so I'm surprised how narrow that is. But I guess it works. That should be for a 12 millimeter pin, uh, and I believe I have not checked. This is definitely the smaller splines for the Yamaha style, the small spline uh, variator, and I assume this is going to be the small taper for the Yamaha style uh, flywheel which normally with my 103cc stuff everything is large the larger diameter here for the big uh, variators and larger taper here for a different size flywheel now we'll move on to check out the cylinder kit pretty much the same deal styrofoam container sealed on there you can tell it's sealed by the tape start out with a pretty hefty instruction manual here looks like multiple languages but that's a bigger instruction manual well I'm used to no instruction manual because I normally buy cheap Taiwan stuff so that's much bigger than I'm used to but yeah definitely has some kind of instructions with it which we'll check out later I'm sure got the gasket kit o-rings all that stuff another sticker 
would assume this to be the piston. Should be 50 millimeter bore piston. Uh, single ring, which is another thing I'm really not used to. Uh, I tend to stay away from that because I'm looking generally for the most treatable thing I can get. But that's kind of where I ended up. Comes with a wrist pin and the standard style circlips that don't have the ears on them, which seem to be the best for actually staying in the cylinder, not coming out and then scarring up everything, ruining the entire cylinder kit. So that's good. We've got brass, an either brass plug or a brass adapter, which I assume will go into the cylinder head that I'm about to pull out of here. I can figure out how to open it. Okay, it's in two bags. No? Yes. So this is a two-piece or modular cylinder head, which is another thing that is new to me because I don't deal with high-end racing stuff. You can see the combustion chamber is actually in this piece. That's where the spark plug mounts and everything. And then there's sort of the uh, outer piece. So those would mount together something like that. Again, something that's totally new to me. I've never worked with one of those. comes with cylinder studs and then it's got the aluminum cylinder here and once again the aluminum cylinder is something I'm really not accustomed to because when I first got into scooters I got an Airsol T6 I guess it's the extreme version that has the bridged exhaust port and it burnt up, it burnt a hole in the piston when I was, uh, actually my father rode the thing. He was following me and he came down a hill and was low on the throttle and it melted a hole right in the piston crown. And at that point I kind of gave up on aluminum cylinders because they didn't seem nearly as durable as what I was getting out of uh, the iron kits. The iron kits were more prone to soft seas and if they did suffer some kind of minor damage to the cylinder, then usually I could just give them a quick hone and maybe a new set of rings, piston, whatever, and be back on the road where that one, it doesn't always happen, but that one actually had uh, aluminum melt in and tear up the Nicosil, uh, the coating that they use on these aluminum cylinders to harden them. And so at that point I kind of just gave up and that has been like, I don't even know, it's been more than 10 years ago and I've never touched an aluminum cylinder since. So this is another thing that uh, is at least mildly troubling to me of how quick I'm going to burn this up. So if I can get you a look in here, you can see that this thing has a very large bridged exhaust port. This is much larger than what I'm used to with just the uh, single exhaust port or some of mine have the uh, auxiliary exhaust ports, but this is huge compared to those. Very wide cord width here and then if you can see on the other side again very large port there a lot of port area and there's a look you can see the boost port down here it's kind of a split boost port in the back and then you get two transfer ports on each side there of the boost port if I can get the in the camera there we go fairly large a lot better looking stuff than I'm used to seeing in uh, my cheap Taiwan stuff again like pretty much my entire two-stroke career I've dealt with cheap Taiwan kits I've used like Polini uh, cast bores and stuff like that but most of my scooting has been done with cheap Taiwan made cylinder kits so this is like way clean to me very nice port layouts compared to what I'm used to. The other thing I guess I should point out here, hopefully you can see this. You can actually see because the light hits it a little different that the uh, bridge here of the exhaust port has been ground back or whatever they do there. 
so it sits back it's recessed a little versus the uh, rest of the cylinder bore because that area will get very hot and there'll be a lot of expansion in that area and that's to try and keep it from seizing up I don't know that this will show up very well on the video but this is the exhaust port area here the exhaust outlet and it appears that they have made an effort to make sure that coolant can get all the way around and surround that exhaust port and you may actually be able to see it better to get the idea on the outside you can see that the coolant passage is kind of made to run all the way around here and cool the exhaust port better which again is something I don't normally see on my cheap cast uh, kits since my goal is to make this an entire drop-in engine uh, I bought actually probably a couple months ago uh, I found brand new CPI cases again I thought they had disappeared and there weren't any more but uh, the eBay seller came back so I bought big half little half and the uh, gearbox half here for my long case Chinese clone and these are all uh, right from CPI as their mark there so I can kind of start fresh on that whole deal I just don't have the budget to do an entire uh, second overrange transmission and change all my ignition components and everything else but at least I figured if I could get the gearbox and the engine itself together it wouldn't be a whole lot of trouble to just drop in the scooter if something happens to my 103 cc or vice versa so that's just a quick look at it um, again just my first impressions because I'm really not used to these hyper racing kits or even aluminum kits uh, you'll see a lot more about it as the video goes on and I set things up you'll kind of see how it all works and this is probably going to be about as much of a learning experience for me as it is for anybody else at this point.